worldwide, bees are disappearing. It's well known. When you lift the lid on a beehive, you're basically looking at a, at a city. What we have out here, we've got a row of honey. And when the honey gets ripe, you see there, they're, they're that silvery. Yes. They're stuffing honey in the cells. Now, if I put my finger into that, oh, you wow. see, they cap it. Mm. Mm. Good. Just, oh, yeah. The white suit is to protect me from the bees, but a barrier far more sophisticated is going to be needed to protect the bees from a tiny pest that threatens to wipe them out. What we're particularly interested in is um, looking into ways in which we could probably control a pest that's gone around the world. It's called Varroa mite. And it's the most serious pest that's actually affected bees. Dr. Dennis Anderson is the world's leading bee pathologist. It's become his mission to protect Australia's honeybees and free the world's bees from the Varroa mite. It's tiny, about the size of a pinhead. But this pint-sized parasite can have a giant size effect on bees. It's a parasite, it's a, it's a blood sucker, if you like, yeah. It sucks the blood of bees and it weakens the bees and as it's doing that, it transmits particularly viruses. At the moment, Australia and PNG are the only countries in the world free of the mite. It's already wiped out half of the world's population of European honeybees. We haven't yet got that mite here. When the mite does arrive, our bee numbers will surely decline, as they've done everywhere else. You say when it arrives. Is it going to arrive? It's not if, it's when. And that's what Dr Anderson wants to prepare for. After 25 years with the CSIRO, he's now gone out on his own, establishing an organisation called Bees Down Under. What I've decided to do is to go public and try to get private industries on board to come in and support us and then if they can support us then we can direct that those funds into uh, various uh, institutions like the University of Western Australia. A decline in bee population would have a devastating effect on agriculture as bees are the key pollinator of many crops. There's also the simple issue of Australian honey remaining free from pesticides used to control the mite in other countries. We're privileged that our honey is pure, good, no problems. I started when I was 17 and um, I'm now 82, so I suppose 65 years I've been keeping bees. Colin Cook keeps bees in his Swanbourne backyard producing a thousand kilos of honey each year. He's one of an increasing number of backyard growers, which is evident by the recent surge in numbers joining the WA Apiarist Association. When I joined, there's probably about 20 members. Now they've got about 200. They've got so many new members coming that they're going to have to find a new place to go because uh, the Ag Department lecture theatre isn't big enough. But if the mite makes its way to Australia, it would have a devastating effect on backyard industries. Research into bee behaviour is being undertaken all over Australia. Some, like this at the CSIRO, have involved fitting bees with tiny transmitters, robo-bees who are effectively flying computer chips. But with any research, funding is always an issue. It's a problem Dr Anderson is tackling head on, so he can unlock the secret life of bees and outwit the mighty might. We've already identified a weakness in its life cycle. It's got to do with the mite recognising particular signals on the bee that it needs in order to reproduce on that bee. It could be one of the clues to overcoming the mite and protecting our bees. I think bees are fantastic. They're one of the most interesting things on the planet.